All right. This is 7-6. This is chapter 7, section 6. It's called Finding an Equation. All right? And this kind of turns everything on its head because you're working backwards from either a graph or some information, like a point slope, and then you're trying to find your way back to the equation itself. All right? So, as it says in this question, this is page 331, number 10. Write an equation of a line with the given point and slope. They've given you some information. You've got to be detectives and work backwards to the scene. Now, negative 3, negative 5, m equals negative 3 fifths. What is that information, and what can you do with it? That's the point. How can you use it effectively to get you where you need to go? Allie? Maybe you could plug it in to the equation, the y equals mx plus b. I think that's a cool idea. That's a good idea, because you know what m is. You don't know what b is, but you at least know what m is. And then you know what y and x is. OK. That sounds good to me. What do you think? What does everybody think? Yeah. I think so. So if this is x, right, and this is y, in this case there's no x1, y1, x2, y2, why not? Because you don't have the m. There. There's only one point, so we don't have to call it anything. Right, Bernadette? Mm -hmm. So what is our, our, the only equation we know so far is what? y equals m y equals mx plus b. OK? So let's write that down. y equals mx plus b. Now, we are not given b, so there's nothing we can do with that. But as has been pointed out, we're given what m is. And when you're given something, what do you do to it? Substitute it. Right? Let's do the pockets. I'm going to do it one step at a time. 1 equals, and I'm going to replace that right here with negative 3 fifths. Does everybody see what I did? Now we can replace what else? The x and the y, right? So what do we put in? What's y equal to? Negative 5. Negative 5 equals negative 3 fifths. And what's x equal to? Times negative 3. Negative 3 plus b. And guess what? Things are starting to pan out a little nicer than we originally thought. You know what you have. You have x and y and you have m. Substitute it all in and guess what? You're, you're setting yourself up for success. You're going to be able to find b. Now what do we do now? Um, you multiply negative 3 over 5 and um, negative 3. We're going to multiply these things together. What's negative 3 times negative 3? That's like negative 1. So it's negative 5 equals 9 over 5, nine over five plus, b. plus b. Yeah, it's, it's positive because negative times a negative is positive. Now, what do we do now? We're almost there, but I'll, remember, we don't like fractions too much. So what are we going to do to get rid of that fraction? Multiply by 5. Multiply by 5. Multiply everything by 5, all right? So multiply this by 5. Not with that pen. Get rid of it. Good pot. Yeah. Multiply that by five. Multiply that by five. And multiply that by five. Because that knocks this out. Remember the bowling ball? So what do we have? Five times negative five equals? Negative 25 equals what? Nine plus 5b. I'm going to do this up here. Okay, well, I'm going to rewrite this now, if that's okay with you. I'm going to put 5b plus 9 equals negative 25. If that's okay with you, I'd like to do that just because I'm setting myself up for success. I'd like my b to be on the left side, getting ready to be isolated on the left, equal to something, some nice little number. So what do we do now? Jonathan, both sides, what do we do? Good stuff. And 5b equals what? Yep. Go ahead, Emily. Divide by five. Divide by five. Okay. And b equals. Unfortunately, we will not. We don't care, but we got a fraction. But what, what do we get for b? Yeah. Six point eight or seven. B equals. Okay. Well, yeah. We could go to decimals. We don't need to. Uh, or, or what was it again? Negative. Yep. Negative. Okay. And that's it. That's what you've got. Now, but we're not done yet because they said write an equation of a line with a given point and slope. And we haven't written an equation of a line. All we did was find B. We're not done yet, right? Oh. What do we do now, Connor? We uh, write the equation we just did except with B as negative 34 over 5. Hallelujah. That's a line. Fantastic. Nice job. So now, rewrite it again. This is what I'm saying. We use y equals mx plus b all the time, right? This is like the gasoline of our economy. 
gets used by everybody all the time. All right, y equals mx plus b, we use it again. We have b, and we have the m from our original information. So here we go, we don't need y and x now. Because if we did that, then we'd get, we'd get mixed up, okay? So we've got y equals, now what's our m? Yeah, x, and then plus b, which is minus 34 over 5. All right, and guess what? Do you need to write out any more, or do we need to change anything? No. Nope. nope, we're done. There you go. It's a long process, man. It's a long process. That's what I said. This is the toughest section of the, you know, the graphing chapter and stuff like that. Um, what happens if they give you an equation line passing through the two points given? And let's say they give you two points. Page 331. Number 20. Uh, negative 2, negative 2, and 1, 3. Those are your two points, right? Now, you're not given the slope, you're not given uh, the y-intercept. How are you gonna get that into an equation of the line? What information do you have, and what can you do with it? Trina knows. I know Jonathan knows. I think so. You recognize what, what we do when we have two sets of points. I know you know. What do we call these points? What do we call these points? X1, what are they, Jonathan? Um, X1, Y1. X2, Y2. Yeah, that's the formula for slope. First of all, you've got to name the points, right? Oh. So the points are X1, Y1, X2, Y2, right? The first set of points, the second set of points. Now that we have that, we know the formula for slope, which is what, Jonathan? Y2 minus Y1 over X. How oh, could you be more excited when you say that? That's pretty good, though. You've got it now. No, I don't. Yeah. So what do we put in there? What do we, where would we get these x, y2 and y1? y2 is equal to what? Yep. Alan, run it at? Yep. And what's y1? Negative 2. Good. And then x2 over x1. What's x2? 1. Yep. Minus negative 2. Good. So what do we get? What's our slope equal to? This is m equals what? 5 over 3. Good. So guess what? We used the information that we were given. We found the slope. What, what, what else do we need to do to get this equation happening? Find B. We need to find B. So we need to go through that whole thing we just did. No! Oh. Ouch. Oh. Yeah. So we got to go y equals mx plus b. So y equals mx plus b. All right. And we got to go through the steps. Hello, Mr. Christie. Hello, Mr. Christie. How are you today? Um, okay. Right here, y equals mx plus b. Um, we got to use m, and we're going to use y and x. Which x and y do we use, Adam? Which one do we use? Which one do we use, Adam? Um, x, x, y, Does it matter which one we use? Doesn't matter which one we use, okay? We can use. Negative 2 and negative 2, for instance. Negative 2 equals 5 over 3 times negative 2 plus b. Okay? And then we go ahead and finish this off. Um, I'm going to do it quickly because we have to go. This is negative 2 equals negative 10 over 3. So I'm going to simplify. Then multiply by 3, you get negative 6. I'm going to put 3 here, 3 here, 3 there. You got negative 6 equals. That cancels, negative 10 plus 3b. If we add 10 on both sides, we get 4 equals 3b, and b equals 3 quarters, or 4 over 3. And we're almost there. Um, you're going to put that in with the slope. So y equals m, x plus b again, with the m from the start, which is what we figured out here, 5 over 3. y equals 5 over 3, x plus 4 over 3, and that's your final answer. Yay. Okay?